Ryzen 7000 is finally here. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. Today we're building the ultimate Ryzen 7900X gaming and video editing system and it looks amazing. But is this monster gaming and video editing system one that you should be building right now? We'll go through our beast of a build and benchmark the Ryzen 9 7900X against its competition in both gaming and productivity benchmarks with some very interesting results. Remember, if you get value out of the video, give it a like, it makes a big difference to the channel and of course subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. With that, let's jump into it. So AMD sent us over two Ryzen 7000 CPUs to test out the eight core 16 thread Ryzen 7700X for $399 MSRP and the 12 core 24 thread Ryzen 7900X that MSRP is for $549. Now the team was very excited to check all this out, but today is gonna be all about the Ryzen 7900X and how it stacks up to its current price competition with the now $589 i9-12900K and the currently $549 Ryzen 9 5950X, both of which have a significant core count advantage over the 7900X. For gaming testing, however, it's important to note that right now both the i9-12900K and the Ryzen 5800X 3D are so fast that even with the fastest GPUs currently available, the Radeon RX 6950XT and the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, most games end up being GPU bottlenecked, not CPU bottlenecked. So while we'll go through gaming testing and we'll see where things stack up right now, spoiler alert that we probably need to do this all again on the gaming side once next gen GPUs launch starting on October 12th with the RTX 4090 to actually see how fast these new Ryzen 7000 CPUs are in gaming. So let's jump into our test build and we're gonna start off of all places with the cooler because AMD just recently let reviewers know that not only have they raised the thermal throttle limit to 95 degrees Celsius on the Ryzen 7900X from 90 degrees Celsius on the Ryzen 5900X, but just like they did with Ryzen 5000, they have pushed the boosting behavior much further to the point where under load, Ryzen 7000 will try and eat up any available cooling to increase frequency and performance for as long as possible. In fact, AMD is flat out recommending a 240 millimeter or 280 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler or equivalent for the Ryzen 7900X, as well as the Ryzen 7950X. Now we ended up going with the Deepcool LS720 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, the all-white ARGB version to match our amazing Corsair 5000X case and a total of 10 fans. Note that while AM4 coolers should work with the AM5 platform, some cooler companies like Deepcool have announced availability for specific AM5 mounting hardware due to a slightly different vertical height of the CPU. Now in our testing in Cinebench R23 multi-core 10 minute duration stress test, we ended up hitting and pretty much staying at 88 degrees Celsius consistently with a maximum boost frequency of just over 5.7 gigahertz on one of the two CCXs, which house six of the cores while the other CCX with the remaining six cores hitting just over 5.5 gigahertz, which I guess equals out to AMD's advertised 5.6 gigahertz boost frequency. With PBO enabled, we did hit just a hair over 5.8 gigahertz single thread in Cinebench R23. Of course, part of that thermal load is the new 170 watt TDP, up from 105 watts in the Ryzen 5900X. And powering that 170 watts is a pretty impressive motherboard in the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master. Now, at the time of filming this video, I do not yet have pricing on it, but when it was announced at Computex, we were told it would be about the same price as the X570S Aorus Master, which was running around $360 at the time. We will take a full look at all the X670 motherboard lineup, but if this board comes in anywhere near that price, it is gonna be tough to beat. It has probably the beefiest VRM that I've seen in a sub $400 motherboard with a six 16 plus two plus two 105 amp power stages and double finned heat sink and the heat sinks on this thing weigh an absolute ton. It comes with not one, not two, but three PCIe Gen M.2 SSD slots. Not that anyone needs a PCIe Gen 5 drive right now. Three PCIe by 16 slots, including that top GPU slot is Gen 5, 12 USB ports, USB type C, and Thunderbolt 4 header along with two and a half gigabit Realtek LAN. It is slightly wider EATX form factor instead of the regular ATX and there aren't any USB Gen 4 ports. But again, if this board comes in near the $360 price point, it's gonna be tough to beat. 
will of course be looking at all the X670 motherboards very soon. Now rounding out the build is this G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo kit of 2x16 gigabyte DDR5 6000 CL30 memory running on AMD's new automatic overclocking profile and its answer to Intel's XMP called Expo. Now AMD is saying that DDR5 6000 is the sweet spot for Ryzen 7000. Something we'll have to take a look at given the cost of the memory itself. Right now the closest memory I can find on Newegg this is being filmed literally the day before this video goes live, is $220 for a 2x16 gigabyte kit of DDR5 6000 CL40. Again, the kit that AMD sent us here is CL30, so it's much lower latency. So we'll have to see how Ryzen 7000 responds to memory at different speeds and looser timings, but this is definitely a premium kit. I am expecting kits of Expo DDR5 memory to be coming to the market in the next couple weeks, and hopefully for those DDR5 prices to come down because unlike with 12th generation Intel, we don't have DDR4 to fall back on this time. For the GPU, we've got the fastest one I could get my hands on, the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 3090 Ti, which should give us the maximum results in gaming and any production work that also relies on the GPU. But it is worth pointing out again that at least for gaming, we may not be able to see the full picture on Ryzen 7000 just yet until we get faster graphics cards. Until then, we've got the RTX 3090 Ti. And finally, just to ensure no bottlenecks, we went with the Samsung 980 Pro two terabyte drives and for maximum power, the 1600 watt EVGA P2 PSU. For the full parts list, of course, check out the links in the video description and we'll continue to update that with alternatives and new products as they become available. All right, let's see that build and how it stacks up against its competition. jump into synthetic CPU benchmarks and man, look at that Ryzen 7900X go. Despite a huge core count disadvantage against both the i9-12900K and the Ryzen 5950X, our Ryzen 7900X pulls ahead in both multi-core testing against officially listed scores for its competitors in both Geekbench and Cinebench R23. And the 7900X obliterates its predecessor in the Ryzen 5900X, crushing it by a whopping 34%. And the Ryzen 7900X is no slouch in single core testing either. It beats the listed scores for the i9-12900K in both Geekbench and Cinebench R23 testing, while laying waste to the Ryzen 5950X and the Ryzen 5900X, beating them both by more than 20%. 
at least for now, Ryzen is back on top of single core. But what about real world testing and creative workloads like Adobe Creative Suite? Comparing our Ryzen 7900X in Puget Bench to the highest Puget certified scores for similarly equipped i9-12900K and Ryzen 5950X systems shows an impressive win for the 7900X in both Adobe Photoshop, where it beats the i9-12900K by 15% and dominates the Ryzen 5000 flagship by 37%. In After Effects, the 7900X battles to a narrow win over the 12900K, while again handily outpacing the 5950X. But in Adobe Premiere, the Intel QuickSync advantage is just too much to overcome, and the i9-12900K wins by 18%. But now that Ryzen 7000 CPUs have their own integrated GPU in the form of two compute units of RDNA 2, it will be interesting to see if AMD attempts its own version of Intel QuickSync, which speeds up video encoding using the integrated GPU to help out the discrete GPU. But while it can't catch the i9, the 7900X does outpace the 5950X despite having four fewer cores. Now let's move over to gaming. And just a reminder that although it's cool to see where we're at right now, We'll probably need to do this again once we get faster GPUs on October 12th. We've compared our Ryzen 7900X scores to Tom's hardware scores for the i9-12900K with an RTX 3090 Ti in three games at 1080p ultra settings in order to create as much of a CPU bottleneck as possible. While this is not a perfect comparison, it gives us a bit of an idea of what to expect with the current generation's fastest GPU in the RTX 3090 Ti. In Watch Dogs Legion, our Ryzen 7900X test setup got an average of 137 FPS, or about 2% more than the i9-12900K test setup score, which is very likely within the margin of error. Similarly, we had 1% lows of 105 FPS within about 1% of the i9 score, and again, easily within the margin of error. In Horizon Zero Dawn, using the built-in benchmark, we got an average frame rate of 203 FPS at 1080p in ultra quality settings, which is 15% faster than the recorded i9-12900K score. We also see a minor uplift of about 7% in the 1% lows. In Borderlands 3, using badass settings at 1080p, we pulled in an average FPS of 189, about 3% faster than the i9-12900K score, but at the same time, about 4% slower on the 1% lows. Given the comparison, both both of these are likely well within the margin of error. So after taking a first look at performance, I really think AMD has a winner here if, and this is a big if, they can keep a handle on the platform price. Let's talk about that platform price for a moment because other than the fact that we're waiting on next generation GPUs to fully understand Ryzen 7000's gaming potential, the biggest wild card in all this, it's motherboard and DDR5 pricing. And honestly, it is a real issue at the time of filming with most DDR5 Expo kits currently being sold as 32 gigabyte, not 16 gigabyte units, and they're priced at least $220 US. Though we are expecting a lot more kits to begin hitting the market very soon, possibly even as this video goes live. Now, if that drives the price down and prices of X670 and eventual B650 motherboards remain nearly as reasonable as the X570 and B550 ones, then honestly, Ryzen 7000 and specifically the Ryzen 7900X, they're looking like a clear winner, at least until 13th generation Raptor Lake processors arrive. Of course, if we end up with a repeat of the DDR5 shortage like we saw when 12th generation Intel launched, and with no DDR4 safety valve on the AM5 platform, then Ryzen 7000 might just end up being way too expensive. And given how expensive the platform is currently, I'd likely just fork over the extra $150 and grab the Ryzen 7950X instead of the 7900X. Or if you're just gaming, consider the Ryzen 7700X or 7600X, which if they run similarly to the previous generation, might provide very close gaming performance at a cheaper price. We will of course have a Ryzen 7600X build coming soon, as well as tons more on new motherboards, RAM performance, and more. Remember, if you got value out of this video, please give it a like as it really helps out the channel. And of course, subscribe and click that bell icon that way you get notified when we release cool content. And if you're looking for the best 1440p gaming monitor to go with your new gaming setup, then check out this video right here. We go through all the models that you're looking for, and we'll catch you on the next one.